and I just went numb. My whole body went numb. I couldn't feel my legs, and at that point, I was like, oh shit. Like a little life update slash story time. I'm not going to go full into detail, but as you guys can see from the title, I broke my back a few months ago or like five months ago, so I have been recovering from that. I'm not going to go full into detail about it, but I'm just going to give you kind of the gist of everything and like how it happened and what I know. And I've been recovering now for about four months, so I am doing a lot better. Sorry I'm rocking, that's annoying. <laughs> But yeah, and also I want to put a disclaimer, if you guys hear my son, he is like laying right there playing, so I apologize in advance if he's being noisy. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to see this video, then just keep on watching. Okay, so I want to kind of give you a little backstory first. So I had my son September 21st, he's my first little baby, um, but like my pregnancy and stuff, I didn't have back pain or anything like that, like out of the ordinary. It was like, I mean, if I was up on my feet all day, my back would hurt, but that was it. So the day that I gave birth, immediately after, I had horrible back pain. It was excruciating pain and my doctor kind of said it's probably from giving birth. I did have a lot of back labor and stuff, so I thought it was probably just from that. Oh, so I kind of just thought it was muscle at this point. It was really bad and I thought it was just from picking my son up and stuff like that. Because I'm a new mom, I'm not used to picking a baby up all the time. I did have a big baby too, um, but anyways. so. So, by the end of November, it got really, really bad. I couldn't even pick my son up at all at this point. Um, I was trying to rest my back for a little bit. And then, um, the beginning of December, one morning, um, I thought I was feeling better. I picked him up, and we were walking into the other room, and I just felt something in my back. And I just completely collapsed down to my knees. And luckily, I was able to fall kind of like on my side. He was not hurt at all. I just want to say that I laid him down very gently. I was in excruciating pain and I just went numb. My whole body went numb. I couldn't feel my legs and at that point I was like, oh shit. Like, am I paralyzed? Is this from my epidural? I was freaking out and I was kind of nervous. I didn't want to call 911 because I didn't know what they would do with my son. Um, he's a baby. I didn't, you know what I mean? I didn't, nobody could stay here. He couldn't go with. Um, so I called Brian at work and he said, hang on, he said it would be a little bit before he could come home. Um, and how I had to crawl to my phone because I couldn't stand up. I tried standing up, I couldn't. Muscle spasms in my back were so bad. I had to like pull my body and crawl like that. Like I couldn't use my legs. I was dragging my body like that. And that's how I was able to get to my phone because I didn't have it on me. We laid there. Um, I just wanted to comfort Milo because I mean I was obviously crying and freaking out and like you know babies can sense that so I didn't want to like stress him out so I was able to lay next to him I was breastfeeding at the time so I was able to feed him and everything and we laid on the floor for an hour and a half because I couldn't get up so Brian got home he got him up he was able to help me for quite a while so we decided to go to urgent care he took me there first and the first thing the lady asked me was, um, you know, did you have a baby or anything like that? And I said, yeah, I had my son and I got an epidural. And it was about um, 10 weeks ago at that time. She's like, well, we don't want to do anything here just in case that it has to do with the epidural. Hang on. <laughs> um, just in case that it has to do with the epidural, uh, they need to do an MRI before we do anything else. So she told me to go to the ER and get checked out there. We ended up going to the ER and... I saw a doctor there, told him what the urgent care people said, and he's like, there's no way it's from your epidural. I promise it's not from the epidural. Uh, we can do an x-ray to check things out. And um, so he did an x-ray, and he said it didn't show anything. Um, and I'll get to that in a little while. Um, he said it's probably just muscle. Give it four to six weeks, and it'll all heal on its own. So I went out of there thinking it was just muscle. Um, thinking it would heal on its own. So a couple weeks after that, it was probably two weeks after that, um, my back was still hurting, so I just ended up calling my regular doctor and I wanted to set up an appointment with him. Set up an appointment, it was about a week or so after that, um, and I went to my appointment. My doctor thought, yes, it could be from the epidural. He set up an MRI appointment and that was for the following week. So a couple days after that doctor's appointment, before my MRI, I 
was walking to the bathroom. I wasn't holding Milo. I wasn't carrying anything. I didn't do anything. I was just walking and I felt it in my back again and my whole body just gave out. It felt like my back had broke and I just fell. That time I was able to fall to my hands and knees so I could crawl back. I crawled over back to the chair and I was able to call Brian and he came home immediately. And um, it was late at night. I didn't want to wake Milo up or anything and go to the ER. So, and obviously I couldn't drive or anything. So Brian would have to wake him up and take both of us. Um, and I'm like, let's just see how it is in the morning. Later that night, I had to pee and Brian had to help me get up. And he was like holding me as I was walking. Um, it was so painful and I was able to go to the bathroom and we were walking back and my whole body, like I just had muscle spasms in my back. It just, I don't even know what happened. It just, my whole body gave out again and I just fell down. I couldn't get up. I was so tense because I was having muscle spasms so bad and I just sat there and I was like stiff like that and I'm like, I can't move. Like I was freaking out. So it took me about an hour and 45 minutes to get back to the chair, which was like 25 feet from where I was. And um, after that, I sat in that chair the next day. I couldn't get out of it. I could not stand up. I wasn't able to get my legs straight or push myself up. I couldn't straighten out my body. And I was freaking out. So my mom was able to come and get us the next day. Um, she is a physical therapist. She brought me a walker from one of my grandparents, so I was able to use a walker, and that was the only way I could walk. And we ended up going back to her house because she was going to take me to my MRI appointment. I got into my MRI, I did that, and then the next day I got a call from my doctor. And he told me that I had a spinal compression fracture on my L3, which means I broke my back. And then I had three disc bulges that were pressing on my nerves and that was causing the numbness and the pain in my legs where I couldn't really move. And my doctor was concerned about the break because obviously there was no trauma. I wasn't in an accident, I didn't fall on my back, I didn't do anything to break my back. So my doctor was concerned and he sent me to do a bone density scan and then was when I found out that I had osteoporosis. Um, if you don't know what osteoporosis is, it's Basically where elderly people's bones get so weak and brittle and they break on their own and elderly people get this Obviously, I'm in my 20s. That's not normal So my doctor thought there was some other condition or disease that was causing this So he sent me to a bunch of different doctors and for months we were doing tests and seeing doctors finally um, in March he sent me to see an endocrinologist and Right away, he was like, I think it's Graves' disease. Now, I don't totally understand what Graves' disease is. It's an autoimmune disease, and it has to do with your thyroid. Um, but basically, what it was doing, my body was like overproducing. Um, I don't even know. It was overproducing, and my body wasn't absorbing calcium and vitamin D, which was causing the osteoporosis. So, obviously, you need calcium and stuff to make your bones strong. My body was not absorbing that. And so that was also why I had to quit breastfeeding. My doctor suggested that I should quit because obviously um, I was giving all my baby my calcium and it wasn't coming to me at all. Um, so that's why I just stopped. I stopped um, in the middle of February. So once we confirmed that it was Graves' disease, um, he said the Graves' disease had just gotten so bad that it had caused osteoporosis, which caused my back to break. And I mean, I had osteoporosis in my hips. I had it everywhere. Um, but my back was the only place that broke and he thinks it was possibly when I had given birth and that's why I had back pain immediately and he also thought my pregnancy just really flared up this Graves disease because I never had symptoms or anything before I was pregnant while I was pregnant it was all just my back so it had just gotten so bad and now that I have been taking medication um, for about two weeks now I feel so much better I have not used a walker in two weeks I had to use a walker to walk um, for about three and a half months I couldn't walk on my own I have not picked my son up since November well actually it was December I haven't picked him up since the day that I fell um, I am able to kind of pick him up like that and I can hold him now um, but I can't pick him up off the ground I can't pick him up out of his crib uh, 
So that's really hard for me. That's probably the hardest part out of all of this, not being able to take care of my baby, and that gives me a lot of mom guilt. So I feel horrible, but I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to get emotional about that. Um, so yeah, basically now it's just see if the medication's working, um, and that should basically kind of stop the osteoporosis from getting worse, but it's up to me to build my bones back, I'm taking calcium supplements, I'm eating healthy, and um, once I'm able to work out a lot, then I can build my bones back up, because I've gotten so weak, um, all I can do now is just a little bit of walking, like 5-10 minutes, and I'm tired. So I just have to start from square one with that, and that's okay. Um, I'm just looking forward for the time that I can pick up my son. That's what I'm excited most about, so hopefully in a couple months that I can do that, um, that's what I'm shooting for. I'm so blessed that I was able to stay with my parents. They do live a couple hours away, um, but I was able to stay with them. They were able to help me um, with my son and help with me. My mom is a physical therapist. So I did get to do PT with her at home. Um, so that was really nice. And my mom does only work two days a week. So she was home with us a lot. And it was really hard for Brian, obviously, because my parents live a couple hours away. Um, he didn't get to see his son every day. I mean, we've been at my mom since January, since, you know what I mean, for the last few months. So he kind of missed a lot, and it's really hard. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions or anything, let me know. That's basically the gist of it. That's the story of how I broke my back, and I had no idea it was broken for a few months. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up, and also hit that subscribe button if you are new here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!